Daryl Richardson, and welcome to Behind the Stars, the untold stories of Black industry dancers. Our next guest has had an amazing career. Let's have a sneak peek of part one of his untold story. Hey guys, it's Hinton Battle. How are you guys doing? I am so excited to be here and honored that I was asked. So where should we begin? Well, in the beginning, I was a little black boy in Washington, D.C. My father was in the service. We had just moved there. And my elementary school decided to put on the production of The Nutcracker. Uh, I don't know why they thought I had any talent, but I ended up doing it and ended up choreographing it and playing three roles. My favorite part was standing on a ladder and sprinkling snow so the snow fairies could dance. <laughs> but anyway... I got a scholarship to the local ballet school, Jones and Hayward Ballet, which is a renowned black ballet school in the district. And I studied there for three years, and then came the call for New York City. School of American Ballet asked me to come to New York for the summer course. I went for the summer course, loved New York. Uh, wasn't so great about dancing, though, but I mean, at that point, you know, I started dancing when I was nine. Went to New York uh, when I was 13. And they asked me to stay for the winter. I stayed for the winter until I was 15. And then, you know, when you're a dancer and you're studying, uh, and I lived with lots of relatives. They gave us a $400 stipend a month in New York City. And even back then, that wasn't enough to live on. So I had basically $200 a month to live on. The other went to my relatives. So I ate a lot of tuna fish. So a lot of tuna fish. And my sister, who was also a dancer, was dancing with George Faison Universal Dance Experience. I loved his company and I wanted to be with him so badly. But all George kept saying is, go back, go to school. Get a degree. So uh, George got The Wiz. And my sister was also going to be in The Wiz. So my sister said, you should come audition for it. And I thought, this would be great. I can go audition for it. I can get the job. Uh, this is just how much I'm thinking about not getting the job. I'll get the job, and then I'll quit. Uh, so I could go back to School of American Ballet in New York City. So I go, and I get the job. And, um, well... We're on tour. Back then, you used to do pre-Broadway tryouts. We're on tour, and I believe we're in Detroit. There were more people on stage than there were in the audience. And our star, who was Stu Gillum, was playing the Scarecrow. I don't know what happened, but Stu decided to walk out of after the first act. So he left the theater after the first act. Charlie Blackwell, our stage manager, comes to me and asks, would you like to go on for the second act? Believe me, I'm not the other city. I didn't even know the part. I didn't even know any of it. So I said, sure. So, you know, what am I thinking? So, you know, back then, I'm sure it's still the same. When you go on for whoever's role, you're moved into their dressing room. So now I'm in the star dressing room, Stu Gillum. And I have David Blackwell with a big, thick book sitting to my right, telling me, now you go here, then you go there, there. 
you do this then, and then you back up here. And, and Stephanie Mills was holding onto my hand and saying, don't worry, I'll just pull your straw. And whenever I pull your straw, you know, it's time for you to talk. Okay? It's time for you to talk. I don't know any lines. I said, okay, okay. <laughs> Stanley, doing my makeup and my hair and the wig, the wardrobe is literally making a costume in the dress room. Reese doing the suit, recutting it, tying it up. Charlie Smalls. Well, don't worry about the song. You just sing what you know, what you don't know. Don't worry about the song. Well, they'll, they'll fill it in for you. So this was total chaos. Total chaos. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I get on stage. And they asked the company not to go stand in the wings. Please don't freak me out and stand in the wings. And basically what I did was, I'm the scarecrow. I don't have a brain. I can't think. So whenever she would pull my straw, I would literally kick myself in the face, do a spin and fall into a split. And say whatever came out of my mouth. And looked at them to go, you better come up with the next line because I don't even know where we are. And that's how that second act went. It was fun. Nerve-wracking. But I had a lot of fun. And everybody was so, so supportive. You know, I'm 15 at this time. Next day, I get this phone call early in the morning from the producer, Ken Hopper, and 20th Century Fox, who we were back in the show at the time. And they asked if I'd like to keep the role. And that was the beginning of my Broadway career. Started with me opening on Broadway as a scarecrow in the Wiz. At 15, they had rewritten this role to my street wise kid. Clarice Taylor was my tutor. Charlie Smalls was my vocal coach. Charlie Blackwell was riding me around that stage. And Jeffrey Holder was a director and costume designer doing that whole thing, was pacing back and forth, back and forth. We were in my dressing room when I was getting ready, and all he could say was, more glitter, darling, more glitter. And he'd walk back and forth. He'd whisper something to Charlie Blackwell. He walked back and forth. It was hysterical, frightening. I loved it every minute of it. Sounds like something out of a movie. And that's how I began. And that was how it all began for Hinton Battle. Stay tuned for part two of his untold story.